I know we're here to speak about travel photography, but what I'm going to do real quick is um, show you some images that I, I've been shooting with Sigma lenses. I speak at a lot of camera clubs, uh, uh, schools, and you know, occasionally different stores. And my first experience with, with Sigma was uh, 2008. Uh, I went to buy my first digital camera, which was a Canon 20 or a 10D. And while I was there, I told a guy I needed a 70 to 200 lens to go with that. And he says, Ron, you got to take this. Uh, and it wasn't B&H, by the way, sorry. But anyway, he says, Ron, you, you got to check out this Sigma 70 to 200. And I says, oh, I don't know. I need Canon. I, I got to have Canon. Oh, I'm on, am I supposed to say Canon or just C? <laughs> I, I won't burst the flame. OK. And so what happened was uh, he, he let me take the, he says, take the lens, keep it for about 15 days. If you don't like it, return it and I'll sell you the Canon, I mean the C, okay? <laughs> so I took the lens and I shot the heck out of it and not one complaint, the only complaint I had with that lens was it, was white. it wasn't white and didn't have that red ring around it. I can change that for about 10 minutes. Oh yeah, just a quick spray paint? Absolutely. And I actually gave him the lens back and plunked out a couple of hundred more dollars and switched, you know, went out with the C lens. I, I switched from Canon to Nikon in 2008, right during a recession, and I had to make a lot better decisions than that. And I, I was called by a camera store to lead a, a baseball game, and they wanted me to, Sigma was sponsoring that baseball game, and they were going to give out lenses to the participants to use. And I said, hey, I really need to check this out before we're going to have these guys go to this baseball game, and, and it's not good. So they let me play with some of the lenses, and I fell in love with them. And then I started going around, like I said, to camera clubs and explaining to them, hey, don't make a stupid mistake like I did, plunking out the extra money. There's some good stuff here. So I put together uh, a sample of photos that I, you know, just so uh, you can see how I use them in pretty much uh, good quality. And you tell me if you uh, couldn't live with this quality of images. I'm going to go through real fast because we are here to learn about travel. Um, these are some of the lenses that I use for, for this demonstration. Pretty much all of these are here, right? They're all here. OK. And like I said before, but this is my second favorite lens in the world right here, the 120 to 300 to 8. It is a really sweet lens. And uh, they just came out with a new model of that, which I haven't seen yet. OK. This was shot actually with the 120 to 300 to 8. This is with the 150. And for this lens, I made a mistake. I'm so used to shooting zoom lenses. This was the prime lens. And I had some focusing issue because the depth of field is very shallow with that 150. And I forgot about that. And I was kind of a little disappointed, but it was a depth of field thing, OK? So you got to be careful when you're shooting with you know, wide, ang uh, wide angle zooms, telephoto zooms, and then you go back to a prime lens. Uh, you you, know, you got to just be very careful with that. But I was still happy with the quality. That's with the 150. Um, I spoke at a couple of camera club uh, conventions down in Florida, so they had me go out and, and shoot birds. So I'm somewhat of a, uh, have a, uh, I can call myself a birder now. All right, you know, I, I'm used to corporate photography. My son wanted me to get shots of gators. He said, Dad, try to get a shot of a gator. So that was for him. This is one of the guys on the crew, uh, boat cruise that shot with the 150. Uh, this was 24 to 70. This is something for Six Flags. That actually happened. They were that scared running away. Uh, what's his name again? Nick Cannon. It was he. I, I'm, I've, I started my 24th season as the uh, Six Flags photographer at Great Adventures, and uh, he came to the park one night, and and uh, we shot some shots of him there. The president was in my town, so I took. I saw a, a Clinton motorcade. Have you never anybody ever seen a motorcade before? It's pretty awesome, isn't it? I mean, everything in his mother is in that motorcade. You know. <laughs> Chow wagon, first day squad, everything. And so I took my son to see, uh, to see one. And I think I shot that with the, the 120 to 400. 
And I was, I mean, first we were this close, and then they moved us back as, you know, we got there early, and then next thing, I know I'm out the light now. But anyway, before you know it, I was like a block away from him. And I shot that, him coming out, and he just, he said, oh, Ron's trying to get a picture of him. Let me wave at him, you know? <laughs> and so he waved at me. But, you know, the lens, it, it did the job. Um, this is iHeart uh, Music Festival down in Las Vegas. And I'm going to really go fast. That's the, that's the eight or 15, I think, or uh, fisheye. OK. That's with the 120 to 300 to 8. Fisheye again. How do you count those things? What, what's your ISO? Uh, sometimes around 2,000. Most of the time, 2,000. This is, uh, they, they, uh, Sigma knew I was going to be in Las Vegas for the, the music festival, so they said, hey, I, can you check, test out a couple of lenses? This, uh, I forget how you say it, but uh, this is shot with my D300, and then you have the crop factor. Okay, so these were lenses for that. So I shot all of these, uh, the Las Vegas stuff with my D300. This is right out of the hotel room. Um, I'm, I shot this in the lobby. Now, they, some places, you know, they tell you not to take photos so, uh, in the casino, and then some people say you can take them. So I, I don't know. I, I, I haven't been stopped lately. But I have my camera ready, and then I'll da -da -da and keep walking, you know? OK. Uh, this shot was at the MGM. And it's everybody, if you've ever been to Las Vegas, you, you know that's the MGM. So instead of showing MGM, I, I wanted to just do a different way of capturing the MGM. And I, and I framed the shot this way with, the, with, with his picture and then the colors and, and just wiped out the MGM. And I kind of like that shot a lot because it's just a different way of showing the MGM and what it stands for. Night photography. Here's a series of the Statue of Liberty that's down at the New York Hotel. Came back to shoot it at night. Again, all of this is shot with Sigma lenses. And I'm going fast because I want to just get, get to our presentation for travel photography. Uh, yeah, between uh, with the D300, I'm not happy with the ISO after 800, to be honest with you. And I'll, I'll go, like the other day I did a Boney James concert and I bumped it up to like 1200, but um, just not really feeling it. Uh, you know, it's just too noisy for me. I'm a corporate guy, so after 200, I'm bouncing out my strobes and, and lighting it up and, and we can go back to 100 or whatever, you know. This is sports. For you mom and pops and grandpas and grandmas who have kids playing sports, these lenses are great. Look at the detail on his nose and everything. OK? What lens was that? Uh, that was the 120 to 300 2.8. I, I heard a person over here. What lens was that? That was the 120 to 300 to 8. Giant football. You're on the field? Uh, yes. Who asked that? Yes. So um, you can see the quality. This is a 70 to 200 from the end, other end of the court shooting back. And then I cropped. That looks pretty good. This is in the May issue of Poplar Photography, by the way. This is the 120 to 300 2.8. Look at that. Look at that. That also crops without ISO? Uh, yes. That one was shot with D, uh, D3. Um, this one was shot in a, in a church gym, or actually a church auditorium in New York. And, and this is the 51.4, I believe it is, or 1.8. 
one four. All it needs is a shot with the 50. So you can see the light. See the light in the background there? Uh, they, they, they put the lights up in four different corners. And then I shot available light. This is what I believe with the D700. But that's the 50 millimeter lens. This is Boney James I shot last week. That's the 120 to 300 2 8. Okay, so hopefully uh, you, you can, you know, I'm, I'm very happy with the lens quality. Um, as far as, you're not hearing this, but you know, the difference that you're saving, like this lens is my second favorite lens in the world. It's $3,000. My first favorite lens in the world is like eight thousand dollars. So please don't repeat this. What is the first favorite lens? I'm not going to say. <laughs> okay, my favorite lens in the world is the Nikon 200 to 400 f/4. That is a. What is my favorite lens in the world? You ask. The Nikon 200 to 400 f/4. When I was at the Beijing Olympics, I had a 400 to 8, 300 to 8, 24 to 70, 70 to 200, 200 to 400 f/4. Um, I shot opening ceremony with the 400 and 300. I put that lens in my locker and didn't pick it up for 30 days later. I used the 200 and 400 the whole time at the Olympics, and it is it's it's great lens. But this lens gives it a run for the money, and I will use this and using it in a heartbeat not even thinking twice about the extra five grand. The extra five grand that I'm saving, I could buy either a really nice D4 or something, or two 600s, or whatever, you get my point? So we're here for travel photography. Um, I, I, I just think that I wish it was mandatory that every person in the world could travel to some other country and just meet other people and see how other people live. It is, it's just, it just blows my mind. I, I, I love my job. I love the opportunities. I, I started out um, uh, at General Motors on the assembly line. I'm gonna get to this. Um, these are some shots that whenever I'm traveling, I'll try to grab some, some photos. I, I got hired to do uh, one of uh, Joel Osteen's um, Night of Hopes in Chicago. And I'm just walking around a hotel and all of a sudden I see this sign uh, you know, Route 66, and I'm like, oh man, I heard the music and everything back in there. You guys heard the song Route 66, and I, that just blew me away. So I'm, I'm, I'm just, hey, I'm here and I'm grabbing a shot of that. I love trains. When I first started photography, I was into trains, uh, light towers, and covered bridges. That's what I used to do before, before uh, uh, when I first got started. I'm working on a different laptop, so I'm hoping that everything is going to come out all right. So these are some general shots that I try to frame up uh, with, you know, almost every time I go into a restaurant now, uh, I, I'll try to get some shots of it. And now with Facebook, you can text that you're there and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and so uh, I'm doing that, you know, just for the heck of it. Um, with me, I started out um, on my honeymoon. I went with an Instamatic camera. And every time I would take a shot, I would shake the camera. Okay, and when I got back from Bermuda, I was really mad because all of my photos were out of focus, you know. Um, so I decided I wanted to learn how to do photography. I was working at General Motors on the assembly line, and I bought my first camera, which was a Canon AE-1. How many know the camera? Yay, my people. <laughs> that means you're way over 30. <laughs> okay, but anyway, and so long story short, um, uh, I, uh, Exxon had a, an explosion. I went down and took some shots of the explosion, and, I, I, and I'm serious. I thought I was the only photographer in New Jersey that had these photos of the explosion at Exxon. So I called a local newspaper, and I said, oh, you got to see my work, and it, I got these great shots. And I'm serious. I, it never dawned on me that they would send a staff photographer to cover such an event. I'm not kidding you. So they thought I really had great shots too. So they said, come on in, let me see what you got. So long story short, they, uh, they said, well, we had our guys here, we'll use their stuff, but uh, let us see some of your other work. So I showed them some of my other work and they took me on as a freelance photographer. 
And so I would work at General Motors from 6.30 to 3. And then in the evenings and weekends, I would shoot for the News Tribune at that time, OK? One day, um, I was at the news desk. And uh, there was a giant football game. And none of the staff photographers wanted to shoot the giant football game. So my very first experience with sports, I got to shoot a giant football game. Now, that's pretty cool, wouldn't you say? My, my whole career is full of unbelievable stuff that happens to me. Okay, I mean, I'm serious, unbelievable stuff. So I said, hey, I'll go shoot the Giant game. So I went to the Giant game, my first game, I got pass receptions. I mean, I just nailed it, my very first football game, okay? And so they started giving me the credentials. Next thing you know, I'm shooting, I would shoot a roll of black and white for me, a roll of color for the newspaper, I'm sorry, a roll of color for me, a roll of black and white for them. Next thing you know, my stuff was being published by the different magazines. I became an NFL traveling photographer. Then I went to NBA. Then I went to NFL. And then after 10 years of doing both, I decided to quit General Motors and go into photography full time. Now, I was happy with that decision until around now because I would have been retired. And I'm not sure what kind of pension coming in from GM, but you know, but I probably need to work another 10 years or so to be ready to retire. So that was the one thing I think twice about. But I, I really love my job. Um, uh, you know, I don't know too many people that can say they love their jobs, but I, I really do. I mean, even with the ups and downs, I still enjoy it. And it is great to be able to travel and to meet people and all that other kind of stuff. So that's basically how I got into it. Um, I would study photos and just uh, be aware of just all of photography. Um, I, you know, I would read magazines. Uh, go to the library, get subscriptions, go to different meetings like this, and just learn all I can to, to be a good photographer. Um, this is my main gearbox that I took to the Olympics, so we're, we're going to get into travel photography now. This is not how you, so a guy asked me, what should I take on a couple of trips that are coming up, they're going on. You don't want to carry all this much stuff, okay? Okay, that's how I rolled for, for the Beijing Olympics, okay? So that you want to stay away from. Um, what I did was Continental is one of my clients, so I called him up and I said, hey, any chance you could get me approved to bring three bags on the plane? You never, ever, ever want to check camera bags, OK? Never, ever. You never want to check camera bags, all right? And so they gave me permission, and that's how I was able to get all of my equipment on the, on the, um, on the plane. Today, this is more like how I do my travel photography, OK? Um, this is a, one of my favorite bags. It's a Low Pro 200. What I like about this bag, the inside of this comes out, and you could make it like a backpack, all right? And that make, that's easier to fit in the overhead compartment. So that's basically how I travel now. Almost every one of my flights, unless it's overseas, are these small planes with the little small. And, and you know, it, when you get down to the, you know, getting ready to board, they'll try to take your case. They'll tell you it's not going to fit in the overhead. So to get around this is I pull that out, and basically that's how I carry my gear. And hopefully, you know, they won't make the compartments any smaller than that. But I highly recommend those type of bags. Uh, I'm not sure what other companies make, but Low Pro. Um, if you, you go on my Facebook page, go really, really deep into it. I must have about 20 bags, and I did a picture on a table with all my bags. And then I did a nice little pose, feeling like a Kardashian, you know, <laughs> with, uh, with my, my collection of bags. But this is one of my favorite bags. Yes, sir? Uh, what did you do with the, the, the other part, with the wheelie? Oh, now, what did I do with the other part, the wheelie part? I let them check that at the bottom of the ramp. And then once I get back to my location, then um, I, I get that back and put it right in, and then I'm rolling away, OK? Uh, I'm a little ahead of myself, but the other thing I recommend is wearing photo vests, OK? then you can stick your lenses in the photo vest. And as long as you're wearing it, they have to let you on the plane with it, all right? And, no, seriously, you need to know that. If you're wearing it, it has to go. You, they, they won't stop you from taking it on the plane. So um, you know, everybody makes the photo vest. And a lot of professionals think it's uncool to wear a photo vest, but I'll, I'll wear mine in a heartbeat. And a guy called the Vest Company, you can look him up. I'm not sure there. But he made one personally for me that has my name, Ron. 
and then on the back, it has a strap that says ronwyattphotos.com. How about that? Now, I'm a, I'm a little embarrassed to walk around with that. You know, that's a little, uh, you know, but, you know, in China, I had it on because I'm going home. And so, you know, and you won't believe uh, all the traffic I get from China. So it's good advertising. So, you know, if, if you have the guts to walk around with, you know, Ron, and then Ron Wyatt photos on the back, go for it, you know, because it's really good advertising. It's a great vest, too. Uh, and like I said, I could put all of my, my gear inside of that vest. You never, ever want to check bags. Okay, for travel photography, what I recommend is the best digital camera you can, you can afford. Um, I'm into really doing a lot of night photography, which you will see down the road. And so I need to be able to shoot at 800, 1,000 ISO, 2,000 ISO. And, and, you know, and I, I, I want it to not be noisy, okay? Fastest lenses you can afford to buy. I, I highly recommend the 2.8 lenses uh, or F4, unless you're out doing all daytime photography, that's not an issue. But if you're doing night photography, you want to try to stick around to the faster lenses of all possible. If you have an F4, then you want to make sure your body can help you bump up the ISO and then you, you compensate for that slower lens. Um, I, I hardly ever, uh, I don't use a tripod. and. Um, and I very rarely use a monopod on the trip, okay? So I'm into hand holding everything, taking a deep breath. Then I'll set my camera up to three to five frames a second. I'll hold my breath and fire off the camera three to five frames a second. And one of those three to five frames will be in focus and, you know, steady, okay? And I forgot to tell you, when I got my first camera to AE-1, I sat and watched television every night and practiced releasing the shutter. You know, I went from this to no problems, okay? So, you know, if you're into the tripods and monopods, that's the right way to do it, okay? You know, there are rules and there are rules to be broken. So, you know, I, I break a couple of rules. Memory cards, bring as many as you can bring on these trips, okay? And then also, the fastest card you can afford to buy. Uh, there's nothing like, like I was shooting a Boney James concert last week and I had the D600, and I think it's like 25 megs of a file. And I'm like, first time I'm shooting a concert with that camera, and I'm like firing away, da 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 And then I'm like, duh, duh, because it's yeah. taking so long. And I have fast cards, so if you're using the cheapest cards, that's going to hurt you when you start getting into burst modes and, and start to shoot. And I highly recommend that you set your cameras to at least three to five frames a second. You know, unless you're taking a, a single portrait of someone, single frame. You, you understand what I'm saying on the dial? But if you're shooting a uh, street scene, fire off three to five frames. I mean, the first one, the person could, eye could be closed. And then the second one, his eye is perfect. The third one, his eye is perfect. You know, so it's digital. So you're not paying for the many frames. You will have to back them up. but. I would just, you know, shoot, set that camera up to shoot three to five frames every time I take a shot. Yes, sir? You show, shoot mostly raw? Or I shoot raw all the time. I never shoot JPEGs. Um, I mean, it's, I, I just saw an analogy the other day. It's like driving a Ferrari and only using the first gear when you don't shoot, when you shoot JPEGs, okay? Um, when I first started digital, I was intimidated by the raw file. And then somebody told me, you really got to try it. And, and I have never looked back. And if somebody hires me to, to and say, I need this shot on JPEGs, I'm in panic mode now. Because um, I want my files to look the best they could look. And I just feel like, you know, now I really got to fine tune everything, uh, you know, in, 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 in the camera. And, and a lot of times, things happen really quick where, you, uh, you know, if, if I'm look, look, looking at my camera and adjusting f-stops and shutter speeds, I miss the shot. Does that make sense? That's how I look at it. Other people want it perfect in camera. But if I'm doing street photography and she just ducked her head, I don't know if it's because she's falling asleep or what, but she just, and I want to catch that action right away. So I can't go and look and see, well, five, six, oh, I got to match the shutter speed, so I got to turn it down. I don't want to be doing that. I trust my camera on aperture preferred or shutter priority. And then once I got the first initial shot of her shaking her head like that, then I'm going to come back and say, you know what, I really want to make sure I got this lady good. Now I'm going to set it on manual and fire off some more shots. Does that make sense? Now, one other tip I'd like to tell you guys about 
Um, the first thing I do when I get a new camera is I'll set it up so it will not fire without a card in it. Okay, you guys follow me on that one? The second thing I do with the brand new camera is I set it up so that it will focus with the back button focus. Anybody focusing in here with just the back button? The only back button. Good for you. Okay. I learned it in the workshop. You learned it in the workshop. Okay. Um, what's happening with the back button focus now? If you know you focus on this gentleman and then you go to take the shot and you come back and look at it and it's just a tad soft, I know I focus and why is it soft? It's probably because you're using shutter release to focus, okay? What you wanna do is Google your camera, 5D back button focus and you'll see how to do it. There'll be a, probably a YouTube version to show you how to set this up. What's happening is when, when, I'm, when I'm, say if I'm focused on, our, on my wife, I, when I want to focus a portrait, uh, or, uh, you know, whether it's environmental portrait or whatever, I'm going to zoom in with my 70 to 200 onto her eye and I'm going to focus on her eye. And so I'm going to use the center dot. I only use the center dot when I'm focusing and I only set it to nine points. When you set it to 21 points and 52 points, all 52 of them points are saying, I want to focus that person. So the center point is the fastest one to use to focus. Does that make sense? Okay, so now when I zoom in with the center point on her eye, and then I zoom, I zoom back out to frame her, now you, you guys that are using your shutter release, you'll hold the button halfway down, okay? And then say if I wanted to pan off to the left of her and show these three people in the shot, now my center dot is no longer on her eye, it's back on her now in the center dot. You following me? Okay, so now the first one may be good because I, you know, held it halfway down. But as soon as I take the second shot, that center dot's gonna now focus on her. But if you use the back button focus, with the back button focus, you will focus on her, and then take your hand off the button. Now she just moved back, so now I gotta refocus her again. As long as she doesn't move and I don't move, I can release that back button and, and the focus is there. Is that making sense? Okay, this is very important. Uh, you know, um, one of the most important things in photography is you have your photos in focus. I very rarely have an out of focus picture. And it, that's even with shooting sports, okay? So, you know, I mean, the only time, like sometimes, like I would have picked my camera up and shot her real quick without even looking. You know, so maybe that may be cause of out of focus, but as long as I'm using that back button focus, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna trust it to be in focus. Yes, sir. What is back button focus? <laughs> right here on the back of the camera it says AF, and I forgot what it says on Canon. It says AF. It says, it says AF? Okay, and almost, Sony has it, Panasonic has it, almost, I mean, that's the first thing I look at, is if it doesn't have back button focus, we got a problem, okay? And so what happens is I'm just push. I have my finger here and I have my fingers here. And the more you do it, you, they're not, they don't even think anymore. They just do it. And if the subject is moving, you just keep holding the button. If the subject's not moving and you're framed up and ready to go, you release it. Just like the olden days when we used to focus. You didn't focus and then hit the shutter while you were focusing. You would focus, frame up the shot, and then fire off. Now, as soon as I move back, what do I have to do? Okay, as soon as I move forward, what do I have to do? And then if the person moves, what do you have to do? Okay. If she stays there and I stay there, what do I have to do? Nothing. Oh, you guys are good. Okay, so I, I, seriously, it takes some, like I, I did a workshop uh, Saturday for football, and, and I sent them an email telling them about the back button focus, and then I said, well, you know, it takes some time to get used to it, and every one of them came out and tried it, and they were all happy. I mean, if you're doing a wedding this Saturday, don't, you know, be careful that, you know, don't go switch to the back button and then shoot the wedding and then come back without a focus picture. You really got to get your mindset. But a day of shooting like that, you'll be fine. Okay, so I'm going to go through this really quick. Uh, again, I, I mean, I'm going to shoot an aperture priority or shutter priority. Uh, I trust my cameras to work in shutter or aperture priority. But I just make, need to make sure I'm in aperture or shutter as opposed to being in manual and trying to figure out what the heck's going on, okay? You follow me? If from before. So um, if I'm doing street photography, I may want to be at a 2.8 or I may be want to be at a 125. Like I was shooting a Boney Jane concert last week and I wanted to be at around 250 of a second. 
and then I just let my, my camera usually was around 2.835, depending on how the light is. All right, so the reason why I shoot in auto mode like that, as far as aperture or shutter priority, I mean, when we're on our trips, one minute we're inside shooting something, and then we could walk outside, and here's a guy coming down the aisle, and I'm gonna take some shots of him. If I forget, my camera was set up, uh, see, he's really coming down the aisle. Um, but if my camera was set up in manual, and, and I saw this shot really quick and started firing off frames, I'm going to be in trouble with my exposure because I was inside for the minute and I needed to change over. But this happened so quick that I wanted to take the shot. You follow me? So, uh, you know, because I spent quality time in my bathroom with my manual and I know how my camera is working, I'm comfortable with setting it on shutter priority or aperture priority. And then I'm ready for anything. And then again, once once I'm, uh, you know, once I got the initial shot of him, then I'll come back and, and fine tune it, and then I may switch the manual then, all right? But, you know, like we're here, it's dark here. As soon as you walk out that door, that guy is scratching his beard, and if I want that picture, my camera's automatically going to react to that situation, all right? Follow me? Any questions? What to shoot on these trips, all right? You know, I, I love doing cityscapes, uh, and I really love architecture, and I love to shoot down on things. 95% of all photos are shot at eye level. So if we went out as a group today, 95% of you guys are all going to shoot at eye level, and all of our photos, all of those 90, you know, are going to look the same, and one guy is going to go shoot from his knee, and you're going to look at it, oh my god, that's so cool. All he did was kneel down. Oh, oh my God, he stood up on the chair and shot down on it, okay? So, you know, you, you want to be conscious of that and start looking for different angles. But these are cityscapes, are good for travel. Or, you know, portraits on these trips, are, that's what I really love to do, just shooting people, okay? Yes? What lens do you primarily use when you're traveling? Okay. What lens do I primarily use when I'm traveling? That was the first time I got that, right? Um, I forgot to tell you, uh, I, I like to use two bodies, and I did mention the Black Rapid strap. There's other straps too, but that's what I use, the Black Rapid. And they just came out with a new strap. They used to have a dual strap that has the, you know, you slip your arms through and you got two, two cameras on the side. They have a new one out that's much tighter and everything just stays where you want it. It doesn't bounce around. And it's in my top five, top ten pieces of gear you got to have. So I like to have two bodies on, to answer your question. I like to have a 24 to 70 and a 70 to 200. So I'm ready for whatever is going to happen, OK? And, and you know, one minute I'm picking this up, one minute I pick the other one up, and, and I'm good to go. And I try not to have 50 million lenses to choose from, just those two lenses, and, and, and I'm, I'm going go to go to shoot. You know, I mean, like, say when I'm in um, Shanghai, I would like to have a tilt shift lens because of the architecture. But then again, there's not really a lot of time to play with that kind of stuff. And, and that's when you may want to have a tripod on then to, to work with that kind of stuff. I love uh, roller coaster vacations. I have three boys. Every one of our vacations included a roller coaster, except for one. We went to New England for fall foliage. And they were waiting. <laughs> Go around the bend. All right, I know a roller coaster is coming. That trip, no roller coaster. But amusement parks are great places to do some really nice photography. And if you stay all day, you can start with day stuff, and then you can go into the night stuff. Architecture. I love architectural photography. When I'm shooting a building from the front, and then I notice, I notice uh, walking around. You should always walk around your subjects. And so after shooting this building from the front, I, I was walking towards the back, and I said, oh, cool. I like to frame stuff with trees and everything. And so um, I'll do this. You know, and now it's a different perspective of the building, but it's framed, all right? I think that's a pretty nice shot, you know? Um, different angles, uh, architecture. This is all the kind of things you will shoot while you're, while you're traveling. Night photography, okay? I mean, if you go to Las Vegas, you know, that's... That, and same thing we're here in New York. Times Square, you could go out and do some really nice night photography. I, I had an assignment to uh, Costa Rica, and I noticed, I said, wow, man, everything is fenced up. And so... I just started shooting different ways that they were fenced up. And I recommend you pick pet projects when you're on your trips. And what the pet projects do is it starts making you think about what you're shooting. 
Now, if, if I can shoot one fence, and I can shoot that fence 50,000 times, but after 50,000 times, you're gonna get tired of shooting that fence. And now, but I still wanna tell a story about defense and security. So now I'm gonna to try to figure out other ways to show defenses and security. And as you can see, here's the fence outside there. This is a church, and even the church is, is fenced up, barbed wired or whatever. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, this is the fence outside the window. So I'm inside of a building, and now my mind is set on trying to find different ways of fences. You follow me? When, while in China, I did scooters, because everybody, that's their main mode of transportation. Go on my website, you can see all the photos that I did on scooters. The FedEx guy delivers on a scooter. They, I got a shot with a pig on the back of a scooter. Uh, one of the guests that was on the tour, he, they knew I was doing this special thing on scooters, so he, they were ahead of us. They went to this little river, I mean, well, the, the bridge had overflowed, and so the people were washing their bikes in that little river over the overflow. And they, he says, Ron, I got this great shot of somebody washing their bike. I'll give it to you to use in your scooter presentation. Follow me? And now, do you want to use somebody else's photo in your presentation? <laughs> I said, thank you so much. But I went down there where he was, hoping that somebody else would come to wash their scooter, OK? And I stayed there about a half an hour. And Carol was on a cot taking a nap. OK, and all of a sudden, this guy comes down with a girl, his girlfriend on the back. And he's riding. I said, oh, cool. He's going to ride through that water. I'll get a nice splash shot. OK, so I'm following him, following him, click, click, click. All of a sudden, he wipes out the bike. OK, <laughs> and you go on my website, Ron Wyatt Photos, and you'll see the series of shots I got. Not only, I mean, I got him, I got like 20 frames of him going through the water splash. Then one of the last shots where he took off his boot because he had on boots and he dumps out all the water that was inside of his boot. I don't think I'm going to have time to show it to you today, but it's on my website. But what my point is that, you know, find these little things and start doing a pre I mean, a special project on that. And, and it, it'll make you think and you'll start seeing a lot better, uh, you know, because you're not just waiting. Oh, there's the Empire State Building. Click, click, click. Oh, there's the... Uh, Radio City, click, click, click. No, I want to shoot people with their glasses hanging down. Or, or even when I'm doing my corporate work, my assignment will be to get all of the speakers. So I'll shoot the, the, the main speaker, and once I maybe got 100 pictures of that speaker, I, I think I got the shot. I'm going to, I don't have to shoot them anymore. I need to wait for the next speaker. So then what I'll do, just to keep myself fresh, is I'll start taking shots of people listening. He's folding his hands. She's adjusting her glasses. She just put her hand on the cheek. He just folded his arms. She's right doing something with her pad. And I'll just be firing off all these different pictures. And what it does is just help my mind keep getting used to be looking for photos to take, OK? So you know, I highly recommend you sign yourself a special project. Here's some more. And so I'm going to bail out of this. If you want the uh, PDF, Feel free to send me an email. Uh, you're from New York, so you all, you all know about keeping safe with your camera gear and everything. Uh, one of the other things, bracketing is pretty good if you're going to be in the auto mode and you trust your camera to do it. Um, I, I, I was playing around with the uh, Panasonic GH2, and it has a real nice bracketing mode. And with that, I'll, I'll, I'll let it go ahead and do the bracket. It's really easy. Just flick the switch to bracketing and fire off three or five frames in your bracketing. So, and then you can come back and get into the HDR if you want to, want to try something like that. Street portraits, it's, it's really nice to just walk up to somebody and smile and then start taking pictures of them, OK? Then show it to them. Now, Carol, she was with us on the Vietnam trip, and she had a portable printer. And so we were on a cruise, and she gave a shot to the the, the, the little boy that was with his, I guess his dad was running the boat, and he was hanging out with his dad for the day. And she took a portrait of him, and she gave him the Polaroid proof of it. And that kid looked at that photo the whole time on the rest of that cruise. And it was, we, we were assuming probably the first time he's ever seen himself in a picture like that, you know? So I, I contact Polaroid, but they never got back to me. Okay, we're, we're in China now. And uh, this was actually shot from, my, from, my, from the bus. We were inside the bus getting ready to go to the next location. And you can see right here, that's like a, 
the, the glare from the window. Now, had I studied all of the lessons with Photoshop user from Scott Kelby, I could have fixed that, but I just picked that shot out, and that's the best we got to right there, you know. I'm sure it is, most of this room could even get rid of that, you know, but I just left it just to prove. That was shot through the window, okay? And actually, this was for, at the Olympics, so this shot it was actually shot with the, never mind. Uh, 200, 400, and then nice stuff is between 1,000 and 200. What's my ISO? Uh, I try to be at 200, but then what's going what's gonna to let me know how I'm going to be at 200? If I'm shutter priority, I, I want to be at like a 500 of a second. You know, if I'm, if I'm carrying a long lens, like I had, the, uh, I had this on Saturday at the Rutgers football game, and this is the 200, to, I mean the 120 to, 120 to 300 to 8, I was shooting at a 2,000 shutter speed. And then I'm real careful to make sure I'm, I'm steady. I, you know, I plant my feet, tuck my arms in, and then with the camera is the top part of the tripod, I, I say, bounce on my, on my arm, I mean on my forehead, and then I'll just count to three, one, two, three, bang, 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 and try to hold my breath and make sure I'm holding this thing steady. And then I'm always shooting in a burst mode, so maybe the first one may have that little jerk, but the second or third will have relaxed from it. Um, when I'm shooting past 500 of a second, I turn off the image stabilizer. And, and, you know, and then most of the time, I'm using Ron Wyatt's stabilizer. And so, uh, but I, I, I had a really good lesson on what image stabilization is all about, and I could kick myself for not taking advantage of the technology, because it's really good. Okay, all right. So this is, uh, what I love about this shot, I, I really like taking people photos. Oh. What I love about this shot, see how he's going up? And he's right in the right position, OK? And all I had to do was just move over a couple of steps to line up like that, all right? So you know, I, I, you know and then he's giving me a look, but you know, what the heck. <laughs> so again, uh, on these trips, I just really enjoyed the people. Some of these have the information. I fell in love with this shot because I was down low. She was up on a perch and shooting up on I said, oh, that's pretty cool. I mean, now photography has to float your boat, OK? So I loved that shot before and the kid's eye, but you may not like it. And so, but it's what makes you happy. Unless you're being paid, then you got to make sure you're, the guy that's paying you is happy. I, 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 I love the soldiers. And most of the time, they won't, they'll tell you no pictures. But sometimes you can sneak up and get shots. Yes? Are you using auto white balance? Auto white balance. Am I using auto white balance? Yes, all the time. I trust my Nikons. Can you trust your Canon? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Of course you could trust. Of course you could trust your Canon. Okay. Some more portraits. I'm going to show you a lot of portraits. Now this one I had a whole bunch, and I had her centered. I had her off, but this one I really like the fact that I put her off center and put her. In, oh, okay. So, I, I, and you know, this is part of the environment. She's selling these carpets and you got all this nice color there, you know? So framing her this way, you know, I, I, I enjoy doing it. Yes, sir? The previous photo with the silver, the green, how come it's green? Because uh, all of the background was, it was in a green, whole, see all, everything in the back. So I don't know if that's bleeding off to him or not. This was at the World Expo and um, Shanghai. And Shanghai. And uh, you know, uh, that may be that, or it could have been I needed to adjust the color balance or something. But this here photo floats my boat, pal. <laughs> OK? Again, I love portraits. So we, on our first trip to China, we, we just put out a note, no more kid stuff. Because everybody was just jamming up photos with kids because they're so cute and everything. I like the older people because of the texture of their skin and all that kind of stuff, you know? And it's like, these guys don't have a care in the world. And this is why I just think Americans need to travel. Because, you know, what I really love about traveling is seeing other people. And it's like, as soon as you get out of the United States, and I'm not hating in America, so don't call and say this guy is bashing America, but. As soon as you leave the country and you go to these other places, it's like a breath of fresh air. There's no tension. There's no strife. 
I mean, do we see any hatred or any strife or anything like it, it, You know, people coming up wanting to take pictures with you and, and, and it's just a great atmosphere. When we came back uh, from Vietnam, I'm, I'm in the CNN, I mean, I'm in the airport and we didn't even get to put in our visas. They got a screen on television, CNN's on. Oh, the president's retarded and this is that. And I'm like, welcome home. You know, so I mean, any of you, who's ever been to China? Did you love it? Yeah. Did you love it? Did you love it? But you hear in America talk about China, it's like the worst country in the world. Okay, it's not. It's a, I mean, I love it there. If I was rich, I'd have a place there. Beijing or Shanghai, okay? And, you know, so I just wish it was mandatory. When I, when I went to Athens, it's like I had to write down my, where I live, where my uh, they, Kodak had us in the villa, and I had to have a card so I could tell them how to get there. And then every day I would argue with the people because they wanted to, to, to check my film, run it through the, the, con the conveyor, whatever. And by the end of the, the, the 30 days, they were calling me Ronaldo, and I'm calling them by their names. And they hand me a collection of Greek wine uh, at the end, you know? And it's just like, you know, once everybody gets to know each other, it's friendly. And, and, and I, I just think that it, it would be so cool that if everybody could just go to the Olympics and meet people from around the world, it's a great world out there. And if you've never been able to experience it, I, I just, if I had the power to make you be able to experience it, I would do that because it's a great world out there. And, and, and I just, you know, I'm, I'm very, I mean, this has been my worst financial year in business, okay? But I still love my job. I wouldn't trade it for anything. And it's because of the people and the experiences I get to experience. When I die, I'm not going to remember that I didn't pay my cable bill, OK? I'm, I'm going to remember all of, the, you know, all of the great things that's happened. OK, I got to run through these. So more portraits. Night photography. They smoke a lot in China. <laughs> This lady, I shot a bunch of shots of her. And then I, I, I came back, because uh, uh, I had my flash in the pocket, in my vest, and I went back and got it. And Phil flashed her. And I gave him my card, because I wanted to send her the photos, but they never responded. I guess they couldn't read the, my, my email address, you know? But again, I, I just love portraits, and, and their, their skin textures, and their, their just ease of life, just, it just it fascinates me. This really fascinated me. This is in Vietnam. This, we went to stop, and this little, this little kids, I've never held a snake before in my life, and I ain't planning on it either. <laughs> now, this guy's not really happy with me taking the shot. He obviously heard my camera go off, and he looked up at me. This guy sells flutes, so I got him with his flutes in the background. 45, 45th of a second, 3.3. That, if I'm not mistaken, was one of those markets that had like a canopy over, so there wasn't really a lot of sun coming through. This, we were on a river cruise, uh, and uh, this lady, I'm assuming that was her mom, and she was just standing in her doorway, and uh, I shot that from the boat back up, and it's one of my favorite shots there, too. Uh -huh. me, yes, yes. How do you get the sharp images of the face at 2.8? Okay, how do I get such sharp, sharp images at a 2.8? You must have came late. Back button focus and fire off a bunch of frames. Okay, don't go click, click. You want to go dip, dip. That means five or ten frames going by. That's that's it. And that's and then that, you know, after coming back with my out of focus uh, shaky pictures from Bermuda, that you know, every time you make a mistake in photography, you'll never you shouldn't never make that mistake again. So that's one of the things I'm really heavy on, is, is not having camera shake and, and sharp pictures. And, and that's why I told you about um, check your stuff every night. Now, when I went to Vietnam last year, I was using a, the Nikon D800. And it was the first time I'm using the D800. My, my 700 got sick like two days before I'm leaving. So I got a D800. And I used that on a trip. And it's a very unforgiving camera. Any little shake, it just magnified it. 
And so I looked at my stuff and I'm like, oh man, this looks like garbage. And so I had to make some adjustments, you know, bumping up to make sure I got faster shutter speeds like my, you know, I'll do a 15th of a second in a heartbeat. Okay, but you know, with that camera, I, I, I just really had to be conscious, maybe bump up the ISO instead of shooting that low, because if, if there's any little movement, it's gonna magnify it. So instead of buying the 800, I wind up buying the 600. Yes, sir. I know you're using the Bird, but typically on these portraits, how many images you say you get in one when you shoot in the portrait? Uh, I'll, probably, I'll probably shoot about, depending, like that lady in the doorway with her, her mom. I probably shot maybe 10 frames on that because we're moving in a boat. So once I'm here, I'm not shooting behind her now, you know? So um, it, it depends, and it depends on how bad I want the shot, you know? You know, I probably shot about 30, 40 of this one. Yes? Can you put down aperture priority? Uh, between aperture priority and shutter priority, one of those two. None of these are shot on manual. Now we were, we were um, this is in China, and we were, these people got married and they were doing their wedding photos or, you know, on a bridge. So we just pushed the, the, the guy out, the photographer out the way. <laughs> and now, now you got like 10 people taking pictures of it. They loved it though, you know? Oh, you know what, these are not in order. Okay, so here's another wedding. Now, I'm not sure if he was waving to me or saying he don't want his picture. No? Okay. But, I, but look at that shot, though. I mean, that, you know, I, I love that photo. He's waving to me. Okay. She's saying your camera's making too much noise. And I love also we got the, uh, the dot there, or the star on his hat. Okay. The Great Wall. Uh, I, you know, I've been to the Great Wall probably, I'm going to just roughly 10 times now. Because when I, for Beijing, part of my responsibility with Kodak was to go out to the, they had a tour to the Great Wall. So I had to go photograph the, the guests, their VIPs at the Great Wall. And then, um, then whatever, after that I could shoot the games and everything. That was part of the deal, you know. And then on our trips uh, with, between it, with M and M, uh, so I got a whole bunch of different varieties of shooting the Great Wall, and a lot of it's leading lines and composition and all that kind of stuff. Okay, but see, this is to me, you know, you go in here, and there's my. I love shooting through archways. That could be another pet project. You see an archway, shoot through it, okay? I, I, I promise you if you, learn to, if you start assigning yourself little pet projects, it's going to make your eye much better. You're going to see photography, you're going to see photos that you've never seen before, that little exercise. Pick something you like and, and it's going to make you much more creative and you're going to see stuff a lot better, I promise you. And that's, that's mainly what the main, that's what makes a, a good photographer is seeing stuff that most people don't see, okay? And that comes with shooting. If you're only picking up your camera once a week, once a month, twice a month, then that makes it harder to get really good at this thing. You really all, should always be taking photos. And this is uh, 200 of a second. So that must, I must have been at around 400 ISO then. And as you can see, which is a rare, is a blue sky day. That's yeah. natural sky, not Photoshop. Okay, I got I to gotta move. Now, I love this shot because here, going down the hill, coming back up again. So you start seeing all these different ways to shoot the Great Wall. Frame it again. This guy is actually, you know, he's selling these down at the end of the ride. Yes? Did you ever use a polarizer? Um, not really. Um, I, I, on the Vietnam trip, I used the polarizer, and I think this is a polarizer, but I don't really use them that much because, uh, you know, I don't want to keep up with, do I have the polarizer or have it all, and sometimes it may hurt me when I'm inside or something like that, so, um, you know, I think you should have a polarizer, but now, I mean, when I'm shooting, I, I'm, I'm not in a, in a place more than 10 minutes. So 
to do polarizer, you know, that means you got the tripod out and you're dialing that thing in and you're just, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that, you know. But that, that's not really the kind of photography I, I, I like to do. I like to just be on the move and catching stuff as it happened. In whatever situation, if I need a fast shutter speed because the water's running, then I'll shoot at a fast shutter speed. If I need a, you know, depth of field, then I'll, I'll set it for depth of field and, and make sure I'm, I'm there. I'm going to go faster. All of these you can see on my website. But again, here we are back to framing again, OK? And, and this is the way to hide when there's a lot of tourists and stuff, OK? You know, and you know it, it just takes away from showing all those people in your way. Some of these places could get crowded. Frame in here with the trees. Tiedemann Square. Uh, what I like about this, we were going here, but here's on our way there. Framed. Like, this is photography one-on-one -on -one curves and all that kind of stuff, just playing around. Now, this guy, I focused on him, pan to the left. He doesn't think I'm taking this picture now, OK? Because he's not, the camera's not centered on him. And, and now, and that's, you know, he's sharp. And, and then there's a F-16, too, so. This was two different attractions, and I combined them into one. I, I just moved over so you could see this building. And uh, I think I fooled around with the sky on this a little bit in Topaz. Framing it. I mean, I, I like framing stuff, so now my eye is looking for those kind of framing shots. That was shot with a polarizer. But I screwed that thing on and waited a couple of seconds and shot, and they were way down the road, you know, by the time I caught up with them. <laughs> Somebody said, oh, you got to pat this guy because you get rich. So I had already passed him, and they told me about him. So I came back and said, <laughs> you know. This one, I just tilted the camera a little bit just to make it different, you know? Instead of here. And then I, I like this, but I also like the way these trees were. This is one of the first silhouettes I did. I did this the first time I went to China. It was my first silhouette. But um, this year, they had it two different colors. So you know, now again, this may not float your boat, but I enjoyed taking this photo. And I enjoyed, I, I, I like the way it's got the two different tones as a silhouette, OK? So I like it. This is the R Lee River 52-mile cruise. These are all the boats that are going on the cruise, and these are all the cooks. So if I wasn't a photographer, the second thing I would like to be is a chef, and then the third thing I would like to be is a truck driver, all right? So, so I enjoy cooking and everything. So I, did a, I shot all these guys cooking while we were passing their boats and stuff. OK, I'm really going to have to go fast. But this is Lee River, 52 miles on the river, beautiful stuff. This is China again. That's the cooking. They're the cooks. OK. All right, dumping the chicken. And the food was really good on this one. I, I mean, uh, I really enjoyed the food. I saw this lady coming up the stairs with the trays. And I said, wow, you know what? I think I want to do an over the shoulder shot. So here's my guy coming up with an over the shoulder shot, OK? Now, I, I could have been tighter and everything on it, but you know, he's coming up the stairs. You don't know how it's going to come out, so I just took the shot. You know, maybe next time I'll fine tune it a little bit. That's the people getting food. Now, every, all of the captains seem to be smokers, so every time we pass the boat, I would get those guys smoking. <laughs> OK? That's with the 120 to 300. And that's hard, because our boat's going by, and then you're just trying to catch them, and you're focusing. How do I get those focused? Because I use the back button, OK? I mean, I rest my case. Oh, man, I was going to, like the judge, your phone. When you were on another boat? Yeah, and we're passing them, right. Now, this, this, they're, they're done with their work, so this lady's washing her hair. She's one of the workers. That's from our hotel room, looking back at the Lee River, or a canal from the Lee River. 
These people are having fun out there. Now, they, we, they warned us on the boat. I mean, while we were coming up the cruise, they said, when we get to this point, you're going to see this guy and you're going to love him. You, you're going to want to take pictures of him, but he's going to want you to pay him. OK, so I'm like, oh, yeah, OK. So I'm going to I'm going to catch this guy without him noticing me, you know, with my long lenses and everything. So that's one shot. That's one shot. That's one shot. Here's a lady paying him. OK, and that's him asking me for for, for me to pay him. He, he caught me. OK, he's a businessman. Oh, yes, I did. Yes, I did. I mean, you know, what, what was I going to say to the guy? OK. That That's to Topaz. This is early in the morning. My, my camera was fogged up, and this is like one of the first ones where the camera was unfogged, because we ran out of the hotel room and, and then went out, and it was hot, OK? And I'm waiting, because we're walking in all these beautiful shots, and my camera's fogged up. This is one of the we're at restaurant we're eating at, and I said, well, while I'm waiting for the food, let me go do an interior shot. Monks, I mean, you know, that religious thing there. I, I got 10 minutes, so I'm just really going fast. I'm sorry. Nike food. This is part of a tour. We walked up this hill, and then we had lunch somewhere over here. Maybe next year. <laughs> Rice patties. Well, we went into this factory where you could buy different trinkets, and these are the workers. So I, I, I spent all my time here. I shot a lot of nice stuff here with them working and everything. But that's standing right over top of them with, the, with 24 to 70 shooting down on them. Ron, do you change the setting on your camera faithful to landscape? What do you mean? The settings, like landscape or Oh, no, no, standard, standard. That part I didn't get to in my bathroom manual time. I, I, I really like this shot because it looks like the bull's going after the lady there, you know? And then that's one of the uh, tourist attractions in um, Shanghai. Shanghai, yeah. Workers again. Here's the warriors. I topaz this one. Now, I'm not into flowers and this kind of stuff, but there are a lot of people that are, OK? And I enjoy doing it, a, these, a couple of these shots. I'm not going to plan a Saturday <laughs> to shoot that, but you know, on the trip, fine, you know? That floats a lot of people's boats, that kind of stuff. This guy was playing his flute. So I, I got this shot of him. And then I tried to get a little more creative with framing him and all that kind of stuff, you know? Now, in the ideal world, I would try to pant truck to my right a little bit okay. so I would have got his whole foot in, OK? Oh, I'm sorry. Here, you know, I wish I had to just move to my right a little bit, then I would have had his foot inside of the frame. But see, I was really looking here, and so I missed that. But that's what I would do in an ideal world the next time. Okay? We, we, we were attending a show so we could shoot with a, this is shot with the 120 to 300 to 8. Um, you weren't allowed to take pictures, but they gave us permission to take photos, so we, we stood in the back of the corner. And, and some sat at their table, and then we took shots. But this is what I did with the 120 to 300 to 8, my second favorite lens in the world. Right here, folks. Who wants it? He didn't leave him. OK, so he wants to give it away, huh? <laughs> but uh, I mean, you know, that's available light. Yes, definitely. And that particular camera could handle it. Yes. Oh, no. OK. Outside again at night. I'm, I apologize. You can go on my website and look at this. 
We got 10 minutes. Now, again, I like to shoot down on stuff, okay? No, no tripod. I, everybody was posing by these things, and you know, and I said, oh, wow, that's cool. That's like a silhouette. So I took some of these. I'm going to do this again next time. I, I wasn't really all that happy with what I got, but I'm going to try it again next time, next year. I mean, this year. That's, the, that's it at night, and we also shot this during the day. This guy is making cotton candy. Then he hands one off to the little girl. Blowing bubbles, playing in the water, topaz. This is part of our group. It's raining that day. We're still out shooting. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe in another hour I'll get this pointing thing, you know. But this is two of the people in our group. And, I, and this is one of the shots I wanted to get with the thing. And the next one I wanted is one of those big hats with the boat going up the river, you know. That, that's what I, I mean, that, that's what I want. And then I want to go to Dubai and I want to do Africa Wildlife Safari. That's, that, you know, not much. $300 for a hamburger in Dubai. But anyway, but I was, I really love this photo, be, you, know, this, you know, walking behind her. It's cloudy, but we're still out shooting. No time to sit and watch, East, you know, ESPN or whatever. Topaz. We were going to have lunch, and I'm walking in, and I see this guy eating his food, and, there, and the smoke's coming from his food, and I said, whoa, that's cool. And I just fired off a bunch of shots of this, okay? More smoker. Now, I slowed the shutter speed down an eighth of a second. So, but I had it at a high ISO, obviously, so, you know, but I knew I wanted to slow to, you know, get that effect with the water, so I slowed the shutter speed down. This is a mile? Uh, this is off the Lee River. Oh. You know, we came back at, after checking in the hotel, we walked down along the river, and this is one that I got here. This was an abandoned bathroom. This door was open, so mostly everybody shot it with the door open, but there was really nasty backlight coming through. So I says, okay, um, you know, I'm, I, I, nobody, nobody was looking, so I ran in there and closed the door and ran back out and took these shots. And, and that's a little topaz. That's one of the hotel lobbies. That's with the 50 millimeter 1.4. McDonald's. <laughs> I, I have to tell you the story, but I don't have time. Okay, but for, for when I went to, uh, when I went to, she'll tell you. When I went to Beijing, um, I ate McDonald's for almost 30 days. I couldn't eat the food there. That was for the Olympics. Okay, and but for the China trips, I I did better. But when I went to the Olympics, I for 30 days I ate McDonald's. I could not. I went to Kodak took us out to a VIP dinner for to thank all of the people before the thing started. And I'm with all of the executives of Kodak. And they said, Ron, you got to try the duck. I said, no, nah, I don't want it. No, come on. So they're paying me. So I, you know, what else are you going to say? You just try the duck. I put that duck in my mouth. And I said, there's no way I'm swallowing this duck. So, <laughs> I, so I grabbed the napkin, right? I grabbed the napkin and put the duck in and put it back on my table. But I'm with the VIPs of Kodak. So they're at this rich, ritzy restaurant. The maitre d' comes and all the duck was on the table. <laughs> this is uh, going up an elevator, shooting through the elevator. What did you say, duck? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's looking down. That's the hotel lobby right there. One eighth of a second? That was one eighth of a second? Uh, yeah, what, what, what the problem is. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Don't, breathe. Don't breathe. Tuck your arms in tight. Da -da -da. And then you come back and you, you know. <laughs> Saw this guy reading a paper and shot him through this little hole. Just a different way to do it. Now this is actually two shots, but I just moved and cropped down. Oh, this is, you know, <laughs> I, just, I just moved and got him in position with this one. And it looks like it's the one thing, but there's actually two different things there. Okay, this is what you don't want to do is have something growing out of the back of somebody's head, but this time it works. Okay, all right, I'm gonna go really fast. This is one of our guys, see the back of his vest? Oh, yeah. That's the vest I'm talking about. Mine says Ron Wyatt Photos, but that's the vest guy. Okay, and he's, out, he's into wildlife photography. His website is beautiful wildlife stuff. Uh, but he's out there trying to get close to this thing and I shot a shot of him, you know. 
This is, uh, this is one of the river tours in Vietnam at night. Now, we're, as our boats passed, the boats coming on the other side of us would cause the wave. So I, I noticed that, so I started taking pictures of the waves going to the boat. So we're, we're out at night on a little river cruise, of just private, like a couple of people. And this was like a silhouette with the background. That's the boat we spent the night on. OK, cool. Monks. Rice patties. That, that was in Lyles. That was Lyles? OK. She, she knows all of these places. I, I was, wasn't paying attention. Look at that. Look at that. OK. But see, I saw that. Out of all that big man, that's how good you get, because you, you're looking for stuff. And you see that, and you just fire that off. <clears throat> it's disgusting. <laughs> Well, so that's not floating your boat, huh? OK. I wonder if he was a musician. No. I don't know what's happening to that chicken. Yeah. OK. <laughs> Scooters. <coughs> I apologize for going so fast. But you can look at them on my website. On your website, does it have the F stop and uh no, cause I'm 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 I mainly had that stuff up trying to get work, so it's a little okay. different yep. people. Okay, this is another show we we were at in Vietnam. I think. We're, okay, I'm surprised I'm not getting the coat hanger yet. This guy was cut nice. That's, that's part of the, the, this was the last day. I'm going to eventually put on my website the last day, because this is where I shot 2,000 frames on one body. I had four bodies going. But the other lady, uh, Carol, who had the exhibition, I mean, Anastasia. I'm sorry, this is Carol. Anastasia. Anastasia. I call her Miss A, because Anastasia got to be hard to say after 10 days, you know, <laughs> and three hours sleep or whatever. But anyway, she shot like 4,000 frames. She did a book and everything uh, on, this, uh, on the Vietnam trip. And that's your competition. <laughs> Thank you very much. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, BNH has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.